Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lure Painting Live Saturday Night Edition. Yay. How are we all doing? Good, I hope. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend so far. I don't know why that's on my desk. All right. So, welcome back to the party. We're going to do some painting tonight, if that's okay with you guys. I, uh, I lost my stencil. Like, I don't know what the heck. So um, these stencils are clear, and a lot of times I'll cut them before the show because um, I'm doing something new, and so I make a new stencil, and then I set them on my counter or wherever, and um, visually they disappear because they're clear. So I lost it, but I found it, and so that's why I'm late. So I'm so sorry. All right. So let's get on with the show here. Welcome, everybody. Um, I am going to do a peacock bass on a, um, swim bait. I am. So I hope you guys are up for that. And that's about all I know. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to pin. Really? Okay. I'm going to give you guys the website here and the discount code so that you can. I got some new stuff up this weekend last week. So um, if you want to order, the website is www.coloradocustomlures.com. Uh, there's some great bluegills, some craws in a couple different colors that are brand new, and then lots of good blades. Um, there's still lots of cold water fishing to do. Let me put this in. Um, I'm doing this by hand, so bear with me. And okay. Use code live 15 in all caps through Sunday night for 15% off your order. And that does not apply to custom orders. So if you if you were wanting to order something uh, made to order that is not in stock, ugh, dude, seriously, this is not even. Hang on, I missed a word. Um, I usually cut and paste that for fifteen percent off your order. Okay, return. There we go. So I'm going to pin this so it's there so you can see where the website is and order. Okay. So ColoradoCustomLures.com, enter 15 in all caps to get 15% off anything that's in stock. Um, also, I did add a section to my website called custom orders or custom designs. I can't remember what I called it, but on there, there's a link to a photo album full of my previous designs. So if you maybe saw me paint something like a year ago and I ran out of stock before you ordered it and you really wanted it, or I just didn't have the lure you wanted in that color, go ahead and shoot me um, an email or a private message on Facebook or Instagram and uh, copy, you know, like, or whatever, screenshot, copy, and um attach the photo of the the design that you want and tell me what lure you want and i can paint it for you um the price is the same as just any regular price item on my website um that's equivalent to whatever lure you're wanting and then um i usually just take a few weeks a couple three weeks to paint those as we get closer to spring it might be a little longer but um as of right now it shouldn't be too terribly long so um Anyhow, I forgot to also turn my compressor on. So I'll tell you what we're going to do tonight. I don't have like a super strong plan, but I've got some ideas. So we're just going to see how this goes. Let's start with some Stino Res Primer, shall we? So um, I use Badger Stino Res Primer in, and I use this for um, priming all of my lures that I paint with water-based paints. And it helps with... Um, Paint adhesion. So it's a nice non toxic um, primer that will help your paint stick better. And you'll notice if you try 
and take it off with like some isopropyl alcohol or whatever, it is harder to get off than regular paint. And so it's doing its job. I'm gonna do a little bit of mask work on this that I should have probably done before, but I didn't think of it. Uh, I'm gonna mask off this front hook hanger. Um, they're, these are swiveling hook hangers. Um, and it's not a big deal, but I just don't want it, I just don't wanna paint it. I just don't really wanna paint it. It's not a big deal if you paint it, but uh, you can always clean it off later. Um, but when you're clear coating these, um, this is similar to a Jackal Ganterelle swim bait, and that wasn't dry and I just touched it. Um, they have swiveling hook hangers, so you want to make sure if, when you clear coat it, you're using a spray clear coat, or if you're painting on a clear coat like KBS or Illumi UV, that you steer clear of the eyelets, otherwise you will clog them and the, um, the eyelets won't spin anymore properly. So, um, yeah, that's where that's at. Anyhow, they're really nice swim baits. All right. Hello, everybody. Checking in. 20 inches of snow. Holy smokes. Andre, hello in South Korea. Thank you for joining us overseas. Hi, Erin. Hey, Lucy. Hey, Shauna. Justin, David, yeah, oh, five degrees, yay. I'm just grabbing a drink and looking at your comments real quick. I know it's boring for you. Share the feed on your page so your friends can join us if they want to. I greatly appreciate the shares. It helps get the word out. I don't have much of an advertising budget, so I rely on everybody's shares to get the word out about what I do if they haven't seen my show yet. So um, again, Badger Sinal Risk Primer. Just um, one coat is good. And then we'll do some white primer. I don't even think we have anybody on YouTube. Nobody's watching on YouTube. You know, people watch later, though. They'll watch um, after it's posted. So they can fast forward me if they want to. I know it. I know it. A lot of chatting sometimes. I get it. And then the detail work can be kind of boring sometimes. And this is going to be one where you might get bored when I'm doing the detail work. So I apologize in advance, but it is what it is. All right. So I'm just going to clean this out. I might need to use, uh, I probably won't need to use any alcohol because I'm just going to put some white paint in here next. And so I don't really care if there's a little residue, but it doesn't come out of your brush as easily as regular paint. So like you see, it's still in there. It's still in the bowl. It just sticks better which is no big deal. Once I get some white paint in there and all that, it'll eventually, I might have to clean it out with some alcohol to get all the residue off, but yeah. So that's style res. All right, this isn't quite dry, so I'm gonna hit it with an air dryer real quick. Hair dryer, I call it an air dryer, whatever. It was really nice here today, you guys would be I probably shouldn't tell you, you're going to hate me, but it was like 60 degrees here. It was like 60 degrees and there's still some snow on the ground because we got a little bit um, this week, but it was a disappointing amount because I would have liked 20 inches of snow, honestly. We need water here so bad. We've only gotten like a couple days of very like light snow, like an inch or two max a couple times and that's it all winter you know in Colorado though the biggest snow months are usually February and March sometimes even April so there's still hope I like to think okay so I'm just carefully putting on one coat at a time Got to be careful that you do light coats. Don't try and pile your paint on. The biggest mistake people make when they're new is putting too much paint on at once. 
you got to do light layers. Let it dry in between so it doesn't run or pool all over the place. Um, this is about covered, I think. 50 degrees in Kansas. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope we get some snow. I hope, hope. Usually whatever we get probably comes your way right afterwards. We went to the zoo today with and their kid. And we had, yeah, that's it pretty much. And then the park and it was nice out. There were quite a few people at the zoo. All right, which is strange in January, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so I'm just cleaning this out with some water from my spray bottle. So I just kind of stir around the edges of the bowl so I get the any dry paint off and then just wipe it out with, with the paper towel. I just keep using the same paper towel until it's really nasty and then I throw it away. And then this one gets any of the paint that's stuck around the needle to come loose. And then um, we're going to do some black, black detail first. And the reason I'm going to do it this way is because my hope is that it'll be kind of like a shadow underneath. Um, the rest of the stuff, and um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm thinking to myself here. We're just going to try this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of dark on this. Like, I'm going to do a little bit of not like black, but sort of like a, um, I don't even know how I want to describe what I'm trying to say here like a watered down black um, that'll give us help give us a little bit of a scale pattern um, but we're not going to do very like much of a scale pattern and then I'm going to put some dark black stencil details underneath of our um, yellow color and my hopes with that is that some of it will show through um, and we'll get like that you know shadowy stripe look that they have that the peacock bass have. Uh, I don't know if it's going to work. So we'll just have to see. Okay. So let's see. And there's probably a few different ways I could do this or try to do this. And um, I don't really know which one's going to work the best. So let's start with the dark, the dark details. And then I'll go over that and make it kind of gray. And then it'll, it'll work out. Okay. So here's the stencil I made. Um, this I used um, Arizona 74, nice. Um, so I used um, a app called Sketchbook, Autodesk Sketch. I don't think they call it Autodesk anymore. I think it's just Sketchbook. And it's uh, available free on the App Store. And you can use it to um, trace photos. So if you have an Apple Pencil, so you kind of need an Apple Pencil um, I think you can even get knockoff Apple pencils now, and they probably work fine. I have, like, knockoff AirPods, and they work fine. I'm sure the sound is not. Anyway, I'm getting off, off um, topic. So you just trace, you know, the fish pattern, like, the details of the fish pattern that you want to stencil. And then you just send that file, email that file to yourself. And then you take it and um, import that into your Cricut or your... Um, Silhouette Cameo software, your vinyl cutter software. This requires some equipment. Um, and then you can just uh, trace that that image or whatever, you know, the trace lines. You can trace those into your, sof in your software um, and then cut, make a cut file. And so it's a bit of a process, but once you learn how to do it, it's not really that hard. Okay, I'm going to pop over to my reference photo for just a moment so that I don't, so I know what I'm doing. 24 Andre in Korea, is it 24 Fahrenheit or Celsius? Because I know they use Celsius, but if I'm not mistaken, you're from the United States, right? Right, I think. Okay, there's my picture. This is my, if you wanna see the picture I'm using as a reference, this is the picture I'm using as a reference. I just popped it off the internet. I thought it was a good looking peacock bass. So that's what I'm using. So I'm going to take the stripes in between the stripes, if that makes any sense. And I'm going to just uh, put them on the top here. 
I'm just lining this up as best as I can with my swim bait. Looking at my picture to see if I'm even close. <laughs> that I made this too long. That's okay. I can I can adjust for that. I did have made it too long though. Okay, so these shorter lines are going to be the ones that are more faded. So weirdly, like they have stripes under their yellow scales and over their yellow scales. And I don't exactly know how all this works. I think they're so interesting. They have all of these beautiful markings that are just like layered. And if you go look at tropical fish, they're just like incredible the way that it's just amazing what nature can do. Like, how come we're not that interesting? So that splattered really bad, um, which is, I don't know, probably my own fault. But it'll be okay, because it's going to go underneath all the scales, so you probably won't notice. Um, for some reason, my airbrush is being a butt a butthead. I'll just move my stencil line. And none of this is really needs to be very accurate, because... Um, I'm gonna, hang on a second, I'm thinking, I'm gonna go over some of it with my, just a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna put some black texture, um, in random areas as well, just to kind of create a little bit of an uneven pattern underneath the scales that might show through a little bit, okay? And again, it doesn't have to be anything super neat or well-planned. We're just trying to create some texture under the scales that will show through just a little bit, but not a lot. And again, I don't really know if any of this is going to work. I'm just guessing. So I kind of did a little bit of a rando stripe and some texture, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And um, then we're going to do some scale or some, I'm going to do some, some black under that. That's going to be um, somewhat lighter. Okay. I'm trying to get these the same on both sides. Close enough here. I probably need to take apart this uh, brush and clean the the nozzle out really good. I was using it. The last batch I painted. If you haven't been on my website today, I did a big batch of. Uh, light colored bluegill crankbaits and some poppers too and those are on my website and i just put them on there today so if you haven't looked go check it out one of my more requested patterns would be the bluegill and they look like this let me pull one out It, they have a little bit of a purplish tint um, right along the side here that's kind of hard to see on video, but you definitely see it in person when you, sh you shine it in a light a certain way. So they're just, they have a little orange, not too much, and just a little blue, not too much, but a lighter body. So it's a, a lighter gill for those of you who have um, lighter bluegill in your waters. So I'm going to dump out most of that and I'm going to put some balancing clear in here and I'm going to see if this is even light enough and if it's not then I'm going to have to water it down even more I might need to it's still pretty dark that's a lot of wasting paint but oh well. I'm just going to wipe it out a little bit so I don't have too much left and then I'll put some more in. So all I'm doing is making my black more transparent by adding a bunch of balance and clear and a little bit of reducer. 
and then it'll come out uh, more like a trans, a super transparent black versus a solid black. And I'm just gonna mist it over um, the body of the lure, and then we're gonna do some gold and yellow, bright gold yellow scales. Okay. All right. So I'm just gonna mist it over. You can kind of spare the face if if you can try to spare the face anyway and mostly just get the body so just like a light do you see how that's real transparent and not not a whole heavy amount of black it'll get it'll give your scales just a little bit of depth but not a really super heavy contrast the peacock bass has got a flatter. It doesn't have really super distinct scales from what I see in the pictures. Not the way that like some, I mean, it probably does in person, but I haven't seen one. So I can tell you. I asked Chris this afternoon if he ever caught one when he lived in Florida. He said he didn't. He, he lived in, um, up near Ocala kind of near, yeah, near Ocala, kind of. And uh, it was too far north, I guess. They're mostly, like, south, right? I don't know. I wonder, my parents live in, um, like, near Tampa. I wonder if that's, like, if there's peacock bass that far north. Is there? Anybody who knows anything about Florida? I don't know if there are or not. That's a little further south, but I think from what I understand, it's pretty far. You have to go pretty far down, don't you, to have to catch one? Or is it in just certain parts of Florida? Okay, so I'm going to mix together a little bit of gold and some bright yellow. And the reason I'm using the gold is because yellow itself is not going to show, it's not going to cover black. And so you have to add some kind of a pearl pigment in with the yellow or you won't cover anything. And the same is true of orange. Um, it just doesn't cover the, uh, the black at all. Really? Okay. So <laughs> my R and D department. Uh, Anthony, your lipless is not ready, but the rest are done. Fahrenheit. Okay. Share the feed, you guys. We'd love to see more people on if you can. So I'm just going to add a little bit of gold, not too much. I'm using um, Tester's Aztec Gold, and it is more tr more opaque than Createx Gold, but it's I don't know how well it's going to cover. So we're just going to... I'm going to mix it up and I'm going to see what I think and then go from there. If it, it has to have enough pearl fleck in it to like offer some decent coverage. And I think I need more. It should stay fairly yellow. It's just going to have a sheen to it uh, with this on it. And then you can always, you can always go over this with yellow again as well. Um, if it's not yellow enough and it, it'll dull your scale look down a little bit, but it won't totally ruin it. Um, so you've seen my pineapple perch pattern. That's kind of how I do that too. Same way I'm doing this. So I'm going to take this out of here and I'm going to put it, I don't know if I can sandwich it in between these or not. Yeah, I think I can. I just, uh, my tail is going to be in between them. So I'm just going to Fit it in here so that the scales go straight up and down on this mesh. And I'm going to put another one right on top and we're just going to clamp them down. Um, I forgot to grab my clamps, so they're right here. So don't go anywhere. I got to move a big jug of soft plastic <laughs> to get to them. Okay. Plastic saw is what I meant to say. Okay. So we'll clamp these together. I'm going to try and get a little bit onto the fabric with my clamp. These big clamps are from Amazon. You know what? I'm going to try to put some links in the description 
on YouTube and on Facebook for some of the stuff I'm using. You guys, I'm just busy and I don't have a lot of time to go back and do all that stuff. Um, and that's why I don't have all my products linked. But you can always PM me and ask me if you want. I'm not really very scary. <laughs> I'm not a scary person. Okay. Um, so all I'm doing is just spraying through the mesh right onto the lure. And I'm mostly trying to avoid the face. I'm kind of staying over that area I did gray. And just carefully making it yellow, basically. So it's turning out really good yellow. It looks really yellow. You'll see it better once I get done. So you wanna make sure that this uh, mesh is nice and tight so that it doesn't slide around. If it slides around at all, your mesh pattern, your scale pattern is not gonna look very good. Um, I just feel good. <laughs> This is one of those days when I should have used the lid. I filled that so full, it just splashed everywhere. Oh well, and I'm not going to learn my lesson either. I'm just going to still do it without a lid. So again, just light coat with the yellow, trying to avoid the face. I'm just doing the body. I'm going to hit this with the dryer real quick, and then I'll do this more. All right, so let's do some more layers. Okay. Share the feed again if you guys can. Also, check out the new stuff I've got on my website. Some really nice bluegills. A bunch of um, really cool craws. If you guys have any requests for spring, feel free to shoot those my way. Doesn't mean you're obligated to purchase them. It just helps me get ideas. Sometimes I'm just kind of guessing what everybody wants to see. And I like suggestions. As long as they're not too weird. I like doing weird stuff, but it's hard to sell a lot of weird stuff, if that makes any sense to you. Not everybody wants to buy weird stuff. Okay, I'm actually doing jigs right now. Um, doing some more jigs. Not my favorite thing to do. I'm trying to, I'm going to start wire tying them, but I don't really know what I'm doing yet. So I have to, I got the wire, I got the stuff to do it, but I haven't like taught myself how yet. Chris does the, um, he does the lead, but from there on out, I'm on my own. So... He started pouring lead like when he was working at a tackle shop. And so he knows how to do that stuff. So he volunteers to help with that, but um, I do the rest of it. So they're just time consuming. I'd rather paint crankbaits, but it's nice to have a variety of things to offer you guys. And I hope to have some spinner baits and buzz baits this year too. It's just uh, getting it all done is the hard part. All right. Wire tying is pain. I know. That's why I haven't done it, but everybody's complaining. You know, they're like, they have to be wire tied or they have to be hand tied or I'm not buying them. And I'm like, okay, I guess I need to figure it out. Just keep working on getting carpal tunnel as young as possible. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do the face yellow now. Just the whole face in a solid yellow. So this is like a shiny yellowish gold color. Do you see those blacks, that black stuff underneath now? You see what I'm saying? How it's kind of subtler with the scales on top? It looks pretty cool, huh? So it's just a technique. You can use that in a lot of different ways. 
but you just have to practice and mess around with different combos and um, yeah, I like it. I'm just going around the nose a little bit, getting this nice and yellow. And then we'll do some other colors. I'm gonna fill this bottom area in with a little more yellow because I see too much white scale and I don't like it. So I'm just misting over top of it with yellow just to tone it down a little bit so there's not all these broken up white scales. Do you see these white scales down here, how they're, the white really shows through where the scales are? I'm just misting over that with yellow to make it not quite so much like that, if that makes sense. I just don't like how it looks. Okay, so I think I'm gonna quit my yellow now and um, hopefully, well, I mean, maybe I'll leave it in there because I have two guns set up now. I really need like four because sometimes when I'm doing these bluegills, I think I counted how many colors and how many steps there were. The other day I was driving and I was just thinking about it. And there's nine colors and 13 steps to each one of these, each one of these bluegill crankbaits. <laughs> so, and it, the darker ones I did, it's even more. It's like more colors and more steps. It's a lot. So having like more than one brush, you can do more than one step on the same lure at the same time. Whereas now what I'm doing is like doing one step on all of them. And then I come back and I do the second step on all of them or in batches or something like that. So I'm not changing my colors unnecessarily. Okay, next step. Let's do some back blending on the belly. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of a more defined line on the belly in white. And then uh, the reason I'm doing that kind of is because we're gonna go over it with an orangish red. And I want it to be um, like kind of a clean line. And then um, we'll move on from there to some more of the, the black spots. After that, we'll do some green on the back and then um, I've got to do some face detail, and then we have to outline some of this stuff. And uh, I, I have a couple ideas on how to do that, but I haven't made a decision. So we're going to play around and figure it out together, okay? So all I'm doing right now is just tracing along the bottom of the swim bait belly to get like kind of a cleaner blended line along the bottom. You don't want to over spray way up, so you want to either spray straight on or come downward. Um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna make these fins wider uh, because I'm probably gonna go over those also with some. Um, let me look at my photo here real quick. Um, right, the wire I think would last a lot longer, but yeah. Thank you, Cameron. A, a bluegill earlier, crazy how many different paints go into it people don't realize. Yes, it is. If you want dimension on a bluegill, you really have to use a ton of colors. And it doesn't seem like it would be that many, but it's way more than what you think. All right, so hang on one second. I'm gonna check my photo one more time here. I need, just bear with me. I was checking for something and I forgot what I was doing now. Oh, the fins. Okay. So it looks like the back fin is whitish with a little yellow on top on the bottom. And then in, this fin is blacker. This fin is whiter. And then the belly fin is, is that orangish red color. So I'm going to try and duplicate that as close as I can. So I'm going to make this one white. I'm going to just fill in most of this with white. I'll probably come back with a pearl white on that also to make it look more shiny. And then I'm just going to leave the other one alone and I'm going to darken it down a little bit when I get to that spot. Um, the tail itself is, um, just a minute, I got to double check. 
The tail looks like it's uh, yellow faded to white and then orange on the bottom, the orange red on the bottom. So we're going to, uh, I'm probably going to need to color this in a little bit yellow on the top here to get that accurate. So see, good thing I didn't dump my yellow. I did need it after all. I, I was thinking about it. So all I'm doing is coloring the top part of this fin in with yellow and then just kind of leaving the tip of the tail white because that's what it looks like in the picture. I'm, I like to try and get as close to the reference photo as I can. Although I do realize that uh, not all of them look exactly the same. And so it probably doesn't really matter that much if you're exactly the same, but that's just how I do it. And it doesn't hurt to go along the bottom of the belly too, because sometimes you get overspray down there. You don't even realize you got, and then we're going to do the other side, just cleaning up this and then part of the, the fin kind of too. Make sure you're, you uh, put plenty of reducer in your white paint. Otherwise it'll kind of splatter a little bit white and keep your needle clean. Okay. Use your fingers to wipe it every now and then. Or a wet paper towel will work too. You can take a wet paper towel, wipe your needle off every now and then. I like badger airbrushes. Um, I like the exposed needle on the Patriots because it's easy to clean it. You don't have to pull off a cap or go around a crown to clean the needle off. I don't have time for that. I don't want to be unscrewing it all the time. I'd rather have it exposed and just you know, deal with bent needles, then deal with cleaning it. I don't really drop my airbrush much. I don't drop it or um, yeah, damage the needles often. Everybody has their, I mean, I'm, I'm a klutz, but I don't drop my airbrush as much for some odd reason. I don't replace needles often. And a tiny bend is not like the end of the world. It's only when they're really jacked up that you have to. I mean, uh, I can bend, I can probably paint with just a tiny, a slight misalignment <laughs> fairly well. Um, or when they start affecting like the direction of the spray badly is when I'll replace them, but I don't do it very often. Anyway. People always ask what airbrush do you use and what airbrush do you prefer? I don't prefer, it's either a Wada or a Badger and I have no preference. They're both good and I use both. So it's up to you, honestly. I mean, I like them both and I don't really think one is that much better than the other or I just don't care. So I have a lot more Badger airbrushes because, um, he runs sales on them once in a while and you can get a good deal. And um, they're just less expensive and the parts are, are easier to get and they're cheaper. I don't know. And it's American made. So if you can support that, I know it's not easy to, it's not easy to buy American made stuff all the time. Cause it's just, there's some things that just really aren't made here anymore. But Badger airbrushes are, and so if you can support them, I'm all for that. And they're like, you know, a, a Patriot is close to half the price of um, an Eclipse, an Iwata Eclipse. So, um, you know, something to think about too. Okay, everybody's so quiet tonight. You guys sleeping? Is everybody sleeping? Okay, let's do some black work. I'm gonna grab another paper towel. And you like all my trash over there? Like it's all this stuff I started and never finished. Once in a while I go through them and I just like finish them and turn them into something, but uh, those have been there a long time. Like they have dust on them. You have to clean them before you do it. All right. I'm going to take my stencil and we're going to put some black in here again. I got both those cleaned out. 
I'm going to switch to my other brush because this one I feel like didn't spray that black very well. So I'm going to put, this is already reduced in here. I just bought these at Hobby Lobby and I reduced with um, Createx reducer before I put it in here. So I don't have to reduce my black all the time. I can just pour it out and go. You end up wasting a lot of paint reducing as you go. So um, then it's ready. So I'm going to do this, the rest of these stripes. Um, I want to show you here. I this So the shape of the fish in the picture wasn't the, sh the same as the shape of the fish um, that I have here on the swim bait. So I'm going to just move it around as needed to get it to fit. So um, this spot is supposed to go like right here, which pushes these these and I did measure it but it just didn't it just didn't work out quite the way it was supposed to so um there was a little stripe like right here I'm going to do that and then I'm going to put this one next to this one that's going to go down the middle and there's one here that I'm going to have to push my stencil down a little to get to it but you just do whatever you got to do it doesn't really matter if it's perfect just try not to go outside the um area that you intended to stencil to begin with you know if you get a lot of overspray into the other areas then that's when it starts kind of looking like like not great on the other side of this i think i might do like a gale pattern on my stripes and see what that looks like um and then maybe i'll go back later and just fill them in but i just want to try it just to see what looks better okay so now i'm taking this middle stencil i'm just going to line it up right on the joint because i have no choice that's where the joint is so just work with it and just go right through as if it weren't there at all and i'm trying to keep it a little more transparent at the end but it doesn't always work out that way so just whatever is the best you can do so this is the last one here now okay now um, I have all these other spots I gotta do but so far that's what that's looking like okay and now I'm gonna do these other spots that I cut out on the bottom I've got one of my hairs stuck here this damn thing so this is the, the rest of the spots i'm going to do um and i'm going to kind of just squeeze them on here wherever they fit and the fan is in the way so i'm just kind of painting around it i almost spilled my paint again These can be pretty dark. In real life, they're dark. So don't be shy on that. And then the tail dot, I can't remember if it goes on the fin or if it goes on the body. I'm going to check my picture to make sure I'm doing it right. Okay, it is on the tail, right, right past the base of the body. So uh, that's what I thought, but at the gym working out. Nice. Um, I use Illumi UV sometimes and more recently I've started using um, automotive, two-part automotive clear coat because um, there's some reasons that it's nicer. Um, there's good, there's goods and bads about all of them. The automotive clears, um, you know, more like a skin. You won't lose as much texture. So it depends. It depends what I'm doing. And I'm going to put this little stripe up here that is right above the head. Okay. So there is one side here, and we have to do some outlines. So it's going to look different than that when I get done. So let's do the other side. Oh, that is way more up front. I don't like that at all. Oh, I was gonna do I was gonna do scale, wasn't I? Hang 
Hang on a second. I said I was going to do this and then I didn't do it, so it's not too late. It's not, it doesn't hurt to try this because I can always just paint over it if I don't like how it looks. So you see how that's got a scale pattern on the stripe now? I'm probably going to shade over that a little bit so it's not quite so um, defined, if that makes sense. Because I think it's a little too much. Not bad, just, I don't know, it's not quite... Middle stripe. I have a little bit of tip dry, so hang on. I gotta. I'm gonna clean this off because my. Have you ever noticed your paint's not spraying real well? Clean your needle. It's probably what's wrong. It just gets like you get paint um, dried on the tip of your needle, and it blocks your spray. From going through so that's usually like nine out of ten times with black especially that's the problem i don't think so much the color as it is that we're using it to do detail a lot so you're spraying a lot of air with air through with it and um so that's causing a lot of um drying to happen when you're pushing the air through And I'm just doing these spots on the stencil now real quick. And I'm almost done. So hang in there. Because then we're going to do some fun stuff. I'm, I'm moving the stencil around a little so I don't have to put any small spots in the joint. Swim bait because it just it doesn't look very good. You have to put some texture in there, but um, you don't want to like... It gets fuzzy. You know what I mean. I think you kind of know what I mean. So. Okay. So we have all our spots on here now. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this black real quick. So it doesn't dry in here and make my airbrush all clogged. And I'm probably not going to come back to it for a while anyways. So I'm um, this. And wipe it out. It's black is like one of those colors that has a tendency to clog your airbrush. So get it out of there as fast as possible. And then clean your needle, people. And then it doesn't usually all come out. So I just put a little bit of alcohol in there and then kind of scrape any dry paint off with a alcohol soaked paintbrush. Flush, dump, and wipe a little bit of water, flush, and you're good. Okay, now I'm going to do just a tiny bit of white texture around the face now. And I'm going to grab some metallic white from, this is Auto Air by Createx. Just a little bit will do, and then just a tiny bit of reducer uh this has black on it and i don't want to put that oh actually you know what i mean i forgot i'm using water-based paints i'll just rinse this really good so it doesn't mix with my white stir this up and then we'll do a little bit of texture on the face so they have like some white dots all over the face so i'm going to take a texture stencil i use this a lot it's the modeled stencil by um anarchy models and it's great for like the fish stuff around the face. I rub. Okay, now I'm just gonna set this over top of the eyeball and I'm just gonna go all over the gill plate with these. You might have to do a little spraying and drying without moving your stencil. Oh, my cord tangles with the other cord. Just 
just so it doesn't start running um, underneath the stencil. I'm gonna see what this looks like. Uh... I usually use, um, I usually use, I don't know if you can see that very well on the YouTube channel, but um, I usually use Testers Aztec, but um, somebody, somebody told me they stopped making it. So a good substitute is Auto Air Metallic White, and that's made by Createx. It's just from their Auto Air line. And then we'll go over the other side real quick here with those same details. Again, a couple coats probably with a little drying in between. If your hair dryer is not completely destroyed like this, you need to paint more. <laughs> Of course, I know a couple guys whose shops are like immaculately clean, and I have no idea how they achieve that. Um, so I did the other side now. It's the same. See? Swivel hook hanger. It's kind of cool. All right. Onward. Um, so let's do the um, orange on the belly first. And so all I'm going to do, I'm going to try uh, mixing the colors that I think might turn out well. It's an orangish red, like pretty dark, pretty bright. Um, so I, my first thought was fluorescent orange and uh, bright red transparent. So we'll see how that looks. So I just did a few drops. This is just Createx fluorescent orange. And then I'm going to use some transparent bright red Createx. And I'm just going to put like one drop in, mix it and see what it looks like. And then I'll add a little bit as I go with a little reducer too. Reducer in general, I think, helps your paint spray better, even if you don't really need it thinned. Um, adding a little bit is never a bad idea, in my opinion. That's way too red, so it's all oh, it's good that I only added one drop of red because it's really red. And I also think it's possibly too bright. So let's go ahead and put some orange. This is Candy Sunset, which is it's not as um, bright as the fluorescent orange. So I'm just gonna see if this tones it down a little bit. And if it doesn't, I'll just start over because it's looking pinkish now. And that doesn't make me happy. So, hmm, not a fan. Okay, let's trash it. All right, let's try this candy um, sunset by itself and see what happens. And I think maybe I'm going to have to use less than a drop of red. Maybe just like dip the tip of a disposable paintbrush in the red and just mix it in because I think it's too, it's, it just makes it almost solid red. Share the feed if you can, guys. I appreciate it. Check out the new stuff on the website. Again, I have the new, the bluegills are in stock now. I have these in the 2.5, the 1.5, the Little John, um, some Strike Kings, and Rock Crawler, and S Crank Plopper, and uh, a few Wiggle Warts. So check them out. There's some cool craws in there too that I added last week. Okay, so. This is less bright than the fluorescent. Um, I'm going to dip my paintbrush in a little bit of red. I'm just getting it like on the tip of my paintbrush and I'm going to stir it in. So I'm not adding too much. A whole drop really made it just really, really red. So it was too much. And I'm going to put a little fluorescent in here just to give it a little more 
of a brightness and see if this is a little better with just a little bit less red in there. Sometimes you just have to make up your own colors by trial and error. I'm gonna do just a teeny tiny bit more red and see if that works. Okay, I think we're close-ish there. Okay, and so I'm gonna go along the belly and the chin, and then I'm gonna outline some fins in this color as well. So I'm gonna pop over to my photo. Um, uh, airbrush, I'll go over the airbrushes that I'm using again. Um, I'm using a Patriot 105 and um, an Extreme Patriot 105. One of them has a 0.3 and one of them has a 0.5. Um, and a lot of people always want to know if you're using a 0.2. I don't, I never use a 0.2, but that's personal preference. I just don't feel it necessary. And that's just my personal opinion. Don't take my word for it. You got to figure out what you like and go with whatever works for you. Okay. All right. So we're going to do the belly in this color. It's super transparent, so you gotta be really careful that you don't overdo it. So all I'm doing is just lightly spraying the bottom here in this color, and then I'm gonna kinda leave a gap in the middle here. I may need to go a little more a little more orange, but I haven't decided yet. And then the tail, the, the tip of the tail on this one, on this side, is the same color. On the bottom here. So you want to make sure you don't use too much paint at once, or you'll end up with, um, your paint will start to run, especially when you're doing, like, an uh, orangish color over white. It really, it really um, takes a little patience. This bottom fin is also that color. I'm going to add a little more orange to this. Just to brighten it up. It's kind of, I don't know, it's lacking some zing. Let's just say that. Sometimes you don't really know what it's going to look like to be sprayed. So this is going to be layered. So. Replicating this might not be easy simply because of the way that I did it, kind of backwards. Again, you can't hurry this, and I know it seems like it takes forever, but it is what it is. A little more here. I'm going to just get this a little bit more solid. This kind of like fades up onto the tail, so you can kind of Hit the bottom of the tail a little bit with the orange, the body of the tail, so you end up with like that kind of a color. So I'm gonna make sure this is dry so I don't smear it. All right, now I gotta do this. Um, well, you know what? That thin isn't really orange. Well, this one only has one of the two fins. This swim bait only has one of the two fins. So I'm just going to do this one orange. Um, let me grab, uh, these have some, some fin stencils. They're not going to fit perfectly, but we're just going to use the curves to, to trace our um, fin. So I'm going to make this fairly solidly orange, but I'm going to definitely try and make it a little darker along the top edge and the bottom edge. So it's a little bit more of an outline, kind of, but not super important. Now. All 
I'll show you progress as I go here. It's just um, so I kind of traced. Oops, sorry. I'm gonna trace along the bin there on the top, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom. A little darker. I'm just gonna go a little darker there, and I'm gonna go along the bottom here and do the same thing, kind of. You don't necessarily need a fin that it matches your your fin that you're painting. Um, if you can just use the curves on different stencils to kind of mimic that shape, if that makes any sense. And then you can kind of get close without actually cutting a separate stencil for I knew I was going to do that. I think we're okay. I've got tip dry and just kind of let loose a little bit. If you're an airbrush artist, you know what I'm talking about. If you use too much air and not enough paint for a while, you'll start to get paint drying on the tip of your airbrush. And it all lets go at once. Okay, so that looked pretty good. So now we have the fit in orange. And I'm going to make sure this is dry, do the other fin, and then we're going to do some work around the, the stripes, okay, and the spots. And um, I've traced spots before. You've probably seen my leopard frog. If you've been following me for a while, I'm going to try and do something similar to how I um, did that. And it takes a long time, so I'm probably only going to do one side of the swim bait tonight. Because it's too time consuming to... Um, keep myself live for the whole thing. I'll finish it on my own time so I don't bore the hell out of everybody. All right, so all I'm doing again is just tracing around the outside the perimeter of the thin. The thin. And I'm just using the edges on this stencil to mask around it so I don't have any overspray hitting the body. I'm just keeping it on the fin. If you see a lot of airbrush tools like online or airbrush, or airbrush um, websites, you'll see all these, you know, like all these stencils with just different shapes and curves and circles. All that and that's basically all they're using them for is just to mask off certain areas in different shapes of curves and then they're moving them around to get that shape um you can do that with the stencils you have you don't necessarily have to have a stencil for every every shape you just have to use what you have and make it work and then that saves you time if you I hate making stencils with like every ounce of my being. I it's my least favorite thing to do. I'm a lot faster than I used to be, but um, I hate sitting at the computer. I really hate it. I'd rather just be out here painting and doing whatever else. So if I can do it without making a new stencil, I will. All right, make just making sure this is dry. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some outlines. So let's, let's get rid of this paint. Real quick, I want to, this is a little lighter than I wanted it to be right here. On the end of this. Okay. I'm, I'm going to put this in here so that it doesn't smear. I'm going to come back to everybody. Um, on my Facebook page real quick because I haven't been seeing your comments. I was using my my picture. If I did miss your comment, don't be afraid to ask again. I 
because I probably just didn't see it if I didn't answer it. Okay, there we go. How much do I sell these swim baits for? It depends on what swim bait it is. Something like this, in this pattern, it's like $35. These are knockoff swim baits, so they're not going to be as expensive as the handmade resin baits. Um, somewhere around 35 probably. Again, it just depends on what it is and what pattern I painted, like how long did it take to do. All right. Thanks, guys. This is 6.1 inches in total, I believe. So, yeah, close to six. So, now we're going to outline some of these darker spots and stripes, okay? So, I have a couple ways I can do that. I have some paint pens. Depending on how wide these come out, this is a really good option. Otherwise, uh, I mean, you could freehand it with an airbrush, but it would be a little bit of a nightmare. So, we're not going to do that because that would be really hard. The other option is to use good old trusty paint brushes and paint. So what we would have to do is mix some white and yellow together to get this to work. I'm going to hope that the paint pens will do it though. We're going to try doing this yellow because I think this is the closest to what's going to work. And um, if that doesn't work, then I, I've got this lighter yellow that probably has a little more opacity to it because it's got more white probably in it. So we'll see what happens. I didn't mean to get the gold one out, so don't worry about that. That was an accident, if you saw that sitting there. So um, these are acrylic paint pens. You can get these at on Amazon. I got mine on Amazon, I think. Um, but you can, that's probably the easiest place to get them. You can probably get them in an art supply store, too. I I do most of my, I buy most of my stuff online because I got two kids, and I hate taking them shopping because they're just, like, horrible little demon children at the store. And so... Um, and I just don't like taking the time to go shopping because I have way too much stuff to do. So I don't. So Amazon for the win. So let's trace these big lines. Um, so you have to depress these a couple times to get the paint to come out. And then you kind of got to move slow. So you don't. Um, sometimes what will happen is they'll get thin while you're going. Like the paint will get thin. And you want it to be a solid line. So, um, oh, shit. You know what I should have done first? I'm going to go backwards, actually, and I'm going to shade the green before I do this. Should I do it first or later? Yeah, I should shade the green before I do these outlines. I'm doing this in the wrong order. So this will just take a second. I'm going to do some green along the top, the high sides real quick here with some moss green and I might need to use a little sepia to make it less bright, but I'll, I'll just have to see how it turns out real quick here. I totally forgot about this. The reason I want to do this before I do the stripes is because it'll change the color of the stripes and I don't want it to do that. So I have to, um, that works really good though. That outline worked really good with the paint pens. So if you want to do like frogs, they work really good for frogs too. Um, if you want to do like a really detailed frog, it takes, it's very time consuming. So, um, yeah, do it because you like it. If you're going to do it, that's all I got to say about that. This shouldn't be too bright at all. I don't think, in fact, you could, all, eh, I think it's okay. So all I'm doing is spraying at a downward angle along the high sides. The high side just means like the top part of your swim bait. Um, and then I'm going to dry it. So um, moss green is really transparent. It's supposed to be transparent. It's a shading color. Uh, and the, the actual color is Wicked Detail Moss Green. Createx Wicked Detail Moss Green. Um, and it's a must-have color for fish because there's a ton of fish that use, you know, everything. Bass, trout, um, just a ton of fish that have this color on them. Um, so all I'm doing is just kind of shading it until I'm happy with how green it is. 
I'm, I'm getting close. I think that's pretty good. Let me see if both sides are roughly the same. I'm trying to hit the face a little more than the rest on the top side here. Okay. That looks good. Okay, so I'm done with that. So that's how you, that's how I'm shading the top of it. And I wasn't sure if I was going to need to darken it with some sepia. Usually sepia will make it more of a muddy green versus like a dark bright green. Um, but when you're going over yellow like that, it kind of already does that. So I, mean, I just ended up not needing to, which is good because yay, yay for less steps, right? So I'm just going to make sure this is good and dry before I set it down again. And we're going to go back to coloring. Because I have a lot of coloring. I love adult coloring books, but I don't have time. This is my coloring. All right. Hello, guys. Thanks for joining. We're doing a peacock bass. This is kind of where we're at right now. So you got us at the end if you're just joining. All right, so again, paint pen. This is yellow uh, acrylic paint pen. These are from Amazon. I got a big old pack that has like 20 colors or more. And I'm just outlining my darker stripes in yellow to mimic the peacock bass uh, stripe outline. And I'm going to do like just a big the big um you can kind of interrupt your outline a little bit too so you don't have to do like a straight all the way around outline you can leave some gaps if you want to to make it look more natural so like you'll see in my bluegill sometimes i leave gaps um on you see the breaks in the line here there's breaks in my line and i just do that by hand i skip spots on purpose because it makes it look more natural, the breaks in the lines. I mean, the fish don't know this. This is just art, guys. It's, all it is is art. It's, it's art. It's fun. You know, maybe you'll trick a fish. Maybe you won't. I don't know. Okay. Now we're going to do these spots too. So this is kind of where we're at. It's all starting to come together now. I think really the, starting to take on the appearance of the real deal. So going along this fin is going to be a little trickier because the like texture of the bait is going to make it a little harder, but we're just going to do the best we can and it'll be fine. There's like some textured uh, fin marks there, but you can just kind of go around them. It's just going to be like a smidge choppy or whatever, but no big deal. And then do the others. It doesn't have to be perfect either because no one's going to be able to tell if, you, if your line is amazing or not. And again, you can like do some incomplete lines on some of these too, and that's fine. Like just go part part of the way around it instead of all the way around some of the stuff. And this is working pretty well. This, for some reason, Last time I did frogs with this pen, it didn't turn out. They, it wasn't as easy. It's working better than it did last time I did this, which is great. Especially when I'm doing a live show and I really don't want to have to explain to everybody why it's sucking. So, okay, let's do a little quick. I don't think I really need to dry this, but just in case I have a couple wet spots before I turn it over. And I will do both sides because it didn't take very long. This eye, I think this eye is a eight millimeter. So I probably have a gold eye I can put on here. That'll look good. 
I ordered some new ones. Um, Brule, B-R-U-L-E on Amazon makes some really beautiful natural looking fisher eyes. If you want to stay, they're a little more expensive than the, um, the more common ones. But um, if you need something really realistic for swim baits and a little less expensive than a full custom eye, like Dead Meat Customs and Jetson Lures make beautiful eyes. They're very, very expensive, uh, which is understandable. They have every right to charge what they charge because the stuff is really amazing. Um, that's one option. Or you can, Brule eyes are pretty good too on Amazon. The colors that I think are really, well, one of the colors that is really good is Frost. They have a color called Frost that's really good over. And then um, I just ordered a couple other colors I haven't tried yet. So I'll let you guys know how those are. I've been doing more swim baits. And so I need like more good eyes that look good and realistic. And then for, I got the most amazing frog eyes from Jetson Lure Eyes. If you ever want frog eyes, he's got amazing, really super realistic looking bullfrog eyes and all different kinds of frog eyes. Okay. I'm going around this tail spot here. Again, there's ridges on this swim bait, so you just kind of have to do your best go around them. This is going to be like super sweet. <laughs> I'm about to make more of these, I have a feeling. Although I know a lot of you guys aren't in Florida, like very small percentage of everybody is in Florida. Although if you're listening from South America, I believe that they're around Central in South America as well, peacock bass. So might be an international demand. I've sold a little bit of stuff overseas, not a ton, but Europe and Australia I have, and well, Canada. Okay. They have some strange tax rules now shipping to Europe though. Like they're wanting overseas people to pay sales tax to European countries. And that's like a whole thing I don't even want to get involved in. So I don't know about that. I kind of took it off my website for that reason. Um, Cause it's just too much for somebody like me who's just doing a really small time business to figure out how to do that when I don't have a huge demand. So this is just, these were a little, little bit light. So I'm just kind of go, going over it again. Okay. Um, I think it, that's about it. There's a couple more here that I wanted to partially hit. All right. I'm going to put the cap on this baby. Do a quick dry. And then I'm going to um, color my, my fins a little bit. Um, and then I need to do some spine shading and then some eyeballs and we're good. Because I'm not sure if that's good. Okay. Oops. Um, thanks guys. Appreciate the comments. Okay. So I'm going to put, I'm going to pop back to my picture for a second here. real quick. Um, okay. So there's not much black except for on the, um, I'm going to have to put a little bit on the spine just to blend everything. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of black, but not a lot because there really isn't much, but this is looking pretty good. I think I'm, I'm happy with this. What did I do last week? I don't remember. What the heck did I do last week? I don't remember what I did last week. <laughs> I'm trying to blank. I don't remember what I did. Oh, I did blades. That's right. Okay. I just finished clear cutting those ones from the show. So I'm just darkening down the spine of this. Just so it all comes together at the top, basically. And then um, this... This front fan is black in the photo, so it's not super dark, but I'm going to 
smashing it. I'm just going to leave this other one alone. I'm not going to mess with that because I'm afraid if I color it white, it's going to look weird and I don't want to screw it up. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is. It's close enough to the photo. I think trying to shade it white is just going to cause overspray issues and it's going to mess it up and it's not worth the risk. So I'm going to leave it. Oh. I'm trying to kind of so the stripes don't come to an abrupt end. You know, the stripes don't come to an abrupt end at the um, at the top. They all blend in um, when you do a little shading like this. But um, I think we're about done here. I'm going to just shade around the eyes a little bit. Not much, just a little bit to make our, our eyeball pop. They're gold eyes. Are they red? They're red, aren't they? A red down looker? Is that all we need? Um, I can't tell in this picture, but I think it's a, a red with gold outline down looker. So, y'all yeah, hang on a second, okay? Don't go anywhere. Give me just a minute. I'm going to get them out because I have them. <laughs> okay, so this eye should be perfect that I have in here. I have it. I don't have that many colors in 8 millimeters, so I promise it won't take me four years to find it. It'll probably be the last one I pull out of the bag, but here we go. All right. So these are just, um, you can buy these from AliExpress, or you can get them on like uh, backwater outfitting has them in stock too. So just a little tiny dab of super glue, Loctite gel control is the best. And then stick that on. And on the other side, bloop. All right, it is done. So, Peacock Bass is all done. Let me know what you think. I'll post a picture of it once I get it all cleared for everybody to see. And then um, if everybody's interested in me doing some more of these, let me know. So, let me see if I can, if I have any other questions here before I take off. Make sure you check out the website. Um, okay, thank you for the unnecessary advice. Uh, the pens, they're just acrylic paint pens. You can um, just, you know, Google or go on Amazon and look up paint pens and you'll find, um, you'll find like a bunch of different ones and look for some that are somewhat of a small, you know, small point or whatever. All right, you guys have a wonderful weekend and I will see you all next week. Bye-bye.